What is going on, everybody? I'm Kyle Richards, and welcome to the Abstract Sports Podcast, where we talk about sports from abstract yet popular angles. Happy Pi Day to everybody. 3.14, 1, 5, and the rest of them. I know it's a long number. That's about it. <laughs> uh, we're coming at you live on Facebook. This time we're live on Instagram, which I'm super stoked about. Um, but we're also still live on Periscope. We haven't been getting a lot of action on Periscope. So I kind of made it the third option, but we'll still give it a go. The only way that I'm able to make this possible is that I have my iPad mini set up and it's charging. I have my my current iPhone that I use plugged in and <laughs> going on Instagram and I have my old iPhone uh, set up for Facebook. So, or uh, no, yeah, Facebook, that's right. Something like that. I ha- I just have too many cameras around me, guys. I even have one recording just for clips. I think I said that last time. But it's just crazy. I feel like I got paparazzi looking at me. And plus all the windows are open outside my house. So anybody who comes by as it gets darker, they're going to see in here and be like, what the hell is that guy doing? But I'm just going to go for it anyways. I'm not scared. Um, wow, that was all freestyling. Getting away from my script here. What am I doing? Um But anyways, uh, as usual, we're going to start out with some recent updates that have happened on the blog um, or not happened on the blog. I guess we'll find out. Um, And I'm going to talk about everything that's going on in the sports world. And if you saw the title of the the podcast, you kind of have an idea of what I might talk about somewhere in there. Um, But it's March Madness time. It's the month of March, guys. Um, so we'll talk about a lot of sports stuff, obviously. And then I last, the last podcast, I asked you guys a question. I didn't get any answers come in, but that's fine. I I think as the podcast continues to grow and a lot of, a lot more people come through, we'll probably tend to get more emails on about those, those questions and answers. Uh, but if you answer those questions, we'll, we will, uh, sometimes share them on the podcast and generate a little bit of a discussion as that, that new, new episode comes out. So um, at the end of this podcast, we'll talk about the question, and I have a new question for you guys so we can just keep that ball rolling. But just some general updates over the weekend. I celebrated my 27th birthday for whatever that's worth. Worth. Um, I I guess I feel older. I don't I don't really know. <laughs> but um, I'll blame the the inactivity on my blog and everything for on my birthday, but also my best man showing up to town to surprise me. Um, that was, that was awesome. You know, if he's watching, thanks, man. I appreciate it. Um, but it was a lot of good fun with, with, uh, good friends and family and I can't really complain there, but speaking of birthdays, happy birthday to Steph Curry of the Golden State Warriors. Um, he is 29 today, which really pisses me off. Like <laughs> I'm, I'm 27 he's 29 and here I am doing this. Like that should be me. Um, <laughs> Another fun thing we're going to do with the podcast, I think I mentioned it last time, My, I have two cats that really like to annoy me, and we're going to keep tally of how many times I mention them because they get on my nerves dur- throughout the podcast. I think that'll be kind of a fun thing to pay attention to because um, I, I, can't, I can't ignore them. They're just annoying little turds. So <laughs> I'm getting way off script here. It's kind of throwing me off. Anyways, let's get into it. So as far as recent things that have happened on the blog... Um, not a lot. (laughs) So let's see, when was it a week, a week and a half ago, maybe. So not this weekend, but last weekend I did a Twitch stream where I went live on Twitch just so that I could see what that medium was like, see who all would come through and, and maybe chat with me as I played some video games. And it was for the launch of a new category on the blog for esports. And at the when I did the Twitch stream, I had it in mind of doing a, a YouTube video, and so I was sort of talking with a script and trying to manage a chat room and making sure my stream was high quality and everything. So it was really hard, um, and so I think going forward, I won't be doing YouTube videos while I stream. I think it'll be something I do off camera, or I guess off stream, whatever. Um, I just I think the stream will become a lot more. Um, improved if I do that. It'll, it'll be a lot better. Um, and I can engage with the chat a lot more, which I think is going to be an important thing going forward. So, so yeah, the, the Twitch stream happened and I still haven't had time to 
get to editing the video to put up on YouTube that went with that, that stream. Um, but I also, after I get that video up, I will have an article to go with it. That's pretty much ready to go. It's being proofread right now. Um, but I think it'll be pretty fun. I mean, the video is not going to turn out to be exactly what I was hoping, but it's still going to be really cool and you guys should probably check it out. It'll be up on YouTube. Just go search for us on there and see what happened. It was kind of, kind of crazy. Um, so yeah, had a, I had a handful of friends and family come into the stream for a bit. We ended up getting a little bit off topic because I was supposed to be talking about how sports related to video games and it, it was kind of hard to do just because I was, I had so many things to focus on. Um, but it wasn't bad for a first try. You know, I had a, a good amount of people come through, um, and we had a lot of good conversation and some friends helped me out with, with the stream a bit. Um, we gained a few followers. We were able to like tap into a new medium for the blog that we haven't tried out yet, which I think is really huge. I mean, the only way that I'm going to know what's going to work with abstract sports and where we're going to be getting good content from is if I try it all and see what kind of engagement we can get from every angle possible. So that's kind of what that was about. But I also am interested in video games. So it was really easy for me to want to do that. And I think it'll be nice going forward. So yeah, so there was that. Um, and then another thing, since we're kind of talking about the blog, this is me kind of spitballing a little bit. You guys can, if once you, once you hear this or see this, you can let me know what you think about this. But part of the whole point about abstract sports is to, is it's about bringing sports back to life. And what I mean by that is that, you know, there's professional sports and everything, but sports are such a huge industry that everybody has a say in sports. You know what I mean? There are so many fans of so many different sports and there's people like me who participate in community sports. And I kind of debated on starting a category for community sports. I thought it could be kind of interesting where people can share their, their stats and their certain sport, or, um, I don't know. I think it could be a pretty interesting thing to look at. Cause I do a lot of golfing in the spring and summertime. I do a lot of uh, city league bowling and sometimes even softball. Uh, so I feel like if I'm going to be devoting time to sports in my free time, I feel like I need to be documenting something about it. Um, I mean, you guys will have to let me know what you think about that. But part of the reason why I'm thinking about documenting that for the blog is because it's kind of a long story, but there's this guy that I've been listening to on Facebook and YouTube and all kinds of other social media outlets. His name is Gary Vaynerchuk. And this guy is an entrepreneur who talks a lot about um, documenting versus creating um, and if you know me, I'm a graphic designer, so I love creating things, but he talks about how you can get so caught up in trying to make the next Facebook or trying to make the next big idea, but you're not actually executing the things that need to happen before that is a thing. And, and so I'm thinking about oh, another thing he talks about too, is like, if you want to make a big idea, a reality, you kind of have to cut out all the things that are taking time away from that thing. So for me, those things tend to be golfing and going bowling and playing softball and when the weather is nice, um, I could be devoting that time to something better. And so I thought, well, I'm doing a sports blog and a lot of my spare time is spent on sports, whether it's playing or watching. So why not incorporate my participation in community sports into a blog category? And I, I think people like me who want to contribute to abstract sports down the road can get involved in a category like that. Cause I feel like a lot of, there's a lot of people that participate in community uh, activities like that. So something to look forward to, um, you know, it, community sports are kind of like that thing for those people like me who, and, and uh, so many others out there who just failed at their dreams of becoming LeBron James or, you know, Kobe Bryant, Michael Jordan, always chasing that ghost, but you, sometimes you, they, the ghost just gets away. And so community sports are the, an outlet for that. <laughs> now I'm kind of joking, but seriously, you know what I mean? Uh, <laughs> so that's kind of what I've been thinking about with the blog. I have some stuff I need to put out and some things that I need to get going, but a um, lot of ideas rolling, which I, I, I'm super excited about. I think as long as the ideas are there, I just need to like, like that Gary V guy says, you just got to execute. You got to make things happen. So that's sort of my mindset. I have never been so motivated in my life after watching this guy. Like last week I was just on a tear of like generating all these ideas and like making things happen. And then like my birthday happened and, and kind of stopped me in my tracks, but that's all right. <laughs> 
Anyways, so that's the blog. Now let's start talking about some sports. So I know it is March Madness, and I know everybody on Facebook, not really everybody, but there were a handful of people who were wanting me to do a March Madness bracket breakdown, which I think would be kind of cool. But I'll, I'll, I'll talk to you a little bit about that in a minute. But um, it's not going to be the main part of the sports category of this podcast. So I'm sorry if that's what you were expecting, um, hence the title. A like little, little clickbaity, a little not. Um, Because it has been a pretty crazy month of March already for sports. So to start, let's start with basketball, my favorite sport. Um, To start on basketball, Dirk Nowitzki of the Dallas Mavericks hit the 30K club. He has 30,000 points. He's one of six players now to ever do that. That's a huge milestone. I mean, let's talk about the people that are in that category with him. Wilt Chamberlain, Michael Jordan, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, Kara Malone, Kobe Bryant, and now Dirk Nowitzki. How crazy is that? I mean, he's been in the league for, this is his 20th year, I believe. Man, I have a bunch of stats here. I found it on Reddit. Um, If you go search on Reddit for Dirk Nowitzki's 30,000th point, there's a big breakdown of all the stats related to the people who have hit the 30K mark. And so... I'm going to read some of those off to you because I I think that something can be said about this. So I think the most important thing when it comes to breaking down who has 30,000 points, it's how many games it took them to get there. It's not their age. It's not how many seasons. I think it's how many games because that's ultimately where you are earning your points. Because like you could play in 20 seasons, but you may only play in like 70 of those 82 games. So I'm going to, I think the number of games is important. Wilt Chamberlain had the least with 941. Um, and this is so this is like the quickest 230,000 points in games. So Wilt Chamberlain is number one, Michael Jordan, Kareem, Karl Malone, Kobe, and Dirk. And so the range in there, so Dirk, it took Dirk 1,377 games to get there. It took Wilt Chamberlain 941. Wilt was a beast, man. Like, that that alone tells you it took him 400 ish less games to get to 30,000 points. I mean, he had the 100 point game. That's like the equivalent of five games to some players, and I imagine that's kind of what he did throughout his career. I mean, I don't I don't know a ton about Will Chamberlain. I just know he's one of the best of all time, and that kind of speaks to that. Um, but then if you want to look at the total points and where people ended up or where they are right now in their careers. So Dirk Nowitzki, you know, he's just barely over 30,000. He just got there. Um, And I'm just going to go from the sixth spot up to the number one spot. Dirk has 30K right now. Kobe, who was number five uh, in terms of number of games to get there, had 33,600 points. That's a lot of points. Um, Carl Malone had about 37,000. Kareem has 38. He's, He's the most scoringest basketball player of all time. 38,000. It took him 1,100 games to get to 30,000 points. Um, and then there's Michael Jordan, who has 30, ended up with 32.2 thousand points, and then Wilt with 31,000. Just some crazy numbers, man. And then you, you you kind of think about the players that are in that category. Kobe Bryant is the youngest. He he hit 30K at 34 years old and 104 days. The oldest person was Michael Jordan, who hit that point at 38 years old in 321 days. That was probably when he was playing for the the Washington Wizards. But, I mean, of course, you got to think. Kobe Bryant came out of high school. He was a pretty damn good player. And when he hits 30K, you kind of have to expect he's going to be the one that's youngest. But still not that far off. Like, Wilt Chamberlain hit it at 35 years, 179. So basically a a year later. But welcome to 30K Club, Dirk. I think he really deserves it. He has a shot that's patented um, by his name. It's called The Dirk. Go figure. Um, But I have nothing against the guy. I think he's one of the coolest guys in the NBA. Like, you could probably tweet at him right now, and he he might respond. That's just how chill he is. Um, So, yeah, Dirk, 30K. Awesome. Uh, The other big story in the NBA right now is the triple-double count. We all know if, you, if you're a basketball fan, you're watching the NBA, you know that there have been a ton of triple-doubles this year. And uh, just to give you guys a, a quick breakdown on, on 
what t- how how big of a year it's been in terms of triple doubles. Here you go. So Ricky Rubio had a triple double on March 5th, which put the league total up to 79 triple doubles, setting a record for the most in a season. And that's on March 5th. There's at least another there's a full month of basketball to go on there. Um, and I'm not sure if they're counting playoffs with the triple double thing, but a month in advance, they had 79 triple doubles breaking that record. But obviously, Russell Westbrook, he's been a beast this year. He was the main contributor to that total with 30 of his own, and and I think there's more than that now. I think he has like 31 or 32. But there was a total of 21 players that make up the 79 triple doubles, which is kind of an interesting fact. I think that was the most number of players um, compared to the last time the record was broken too. But the guy I want to talk about a little bit, I mean, I've already mentioned it before in one of our podcasts, but... I want to talk about Russell Westbrook a bit because this guy, he's he's making history this year in so many different ways, and I think it's important that we talk about him. Um, so right now, there's a lot of talks about him because he has the potential to average a triple-double throughout an entire season. The last person to do that was Oscar Robertson back in 61, 62, and I'm looking at ESPN, so I know that's right. <laughs> I'm, I'm kind of cheating. But thanks, ESPN, for providing me with the stats. I appreciate. Um, But yeah, so it's been 50, 60 years since somebody's averaged a triple-double. It's one of those stats that you would think that nobody is ever going to break, similar to uh, John Stockton's 15,000 assists in his career, whatever that number was. Um, That's one of those stats that you would think would never get broken. Then this guy comes out with a vengeance this year and makes it. he's potentially going to make it happen. According to this ESPN article, he has a 70 per 70 he has a 70% chance of averaging a triple double. That's pretty good odds. Um, and there's a guy at ESPN his name's Kevin Pelton who put together a bunch of in- infographics about this uh, about uh, Russell Westbrook and his chase to to history with triple doubles this year. 70% chance of averaging a triple double. Um, and according to his calculations with um, let's see where 66 games in the season, maybe more than that as of tonight. Um, 16 games remaining, and I don't know if that's accurate. This could be a little bit out of date. Um, But he is estimated to end up with 40 triple-doubles this season, which is one shy of uh, Oscar Robertson with the record of most triple-doubles in a season. Obviously, everybody who talks about um, he doesn't deserve MVP because – uh, Jason Dunyon on Facebook just said Russell Westbrook is a beast. He's a monster. Um, but people who say that he doesn't deserve MVP, I think they're a little bit crazy. I mean, the competition is pretty stout with James Harden. He's putting up some pretty huge numbers as well. But I, I think Russell Westbrook has had more of an impact on his team than any other player in the, in the league. Um, but ending up with 40 triple doubles, people are going to say, it's not about stats. It's not about triple doubles. And I'm trust me, I am a guy that is about not looking at the stats. But if you're talking about the most valuable player in terms of you know an entire league, I think it has to do with the most impact they have on a team's success. And the other argument people are going to talk about, and I'm, I may mention this in the previous podcast. It's been like a week and a few days, so I may have forgotten already. But he, I lost my train of thought. That's a bummer, dude. But he, okay, 40 people, oh yeah, the, people are going to say that it also matter, depends on uh, how far they make it into the playoffs that determines who gets the, the MVP. And they're saying that, you know, with the Thunder, they're, they're not going to be that far in the playoffs when they start out, and they probably aren't going to make it far once the playoffs get going. So he's not going to get MVP. They're all saying that uh, James Harden's going to get it. And, you know, I think it's well-deserved both ways. I just think that Russell Westbrook has had way more of an impact on his team than anybody else this season. And you could probably like, I feel like a, a lot of the NBA is going to say the same thing, but we'll see what happens um, at the end of the season here. Uh, just some more quick stats about it. Since I'm looking at this sheet, um, the question is, is Westbrook Westbrook's triple double a winning play, which is kind of what I was talking about uh, there. The Thunder's winning percentage with when he has triple doubles is 81%. And without them, their win percentage is 32%. Um, overall win percentage of 56%. So I guess it's kind of yes, 
<laughs> I think so. Um, but yeah, I mean, we, I actually wrote an article on the blog. It's called uh, Russell Westbrook's Mamba like mentality. And if you know, Kobe Bryant, you know what I'm talking about. The guy, when he goes out there on the court, he's trying to do everything he can to make his team win. And you can see it on his face. Like he is focused and his attitude is just there. Um, so if you want to check out that article, you go to the website, abstractsports.com and go to the intangibles category, read up on it there. I kind of compare him to my favorite player in Kobe Bryant. So Russell Westbrook, triple doubles. It's been a crazy year in sports, man, especially in basketball with all the numbers. Um, but since we're still in basketball, I'm a little bit behind schedule, but that's okay. Since we're talking about basketball still, let's talk about that March Madness business. You know what? I actually need to go do something really quick. Um, sorry, just one sec. Share. There we go. So it's March Madness, guys. Uh, uh, Jason, thanks for the share of the podcast on Facebook. If you guys want to find us on Facebook so you know when we go live, it's facebook.com slash abstract sports. Um, I try to do this once a week, so just know that going forward. Uh, March Madness. Okay, getting a little distracted. That's all right. So March Madness, it's such a cool thing because the odds of filling out a perfect bracket are like one to seven and a half billion or something crazy like that. According to Forbes, you have a one in, that's a lot of numbers. It's more than that. 9.2 quintillion, one to 9.2 quintillion odds of filling out a perfect bracket. And the reason for that is because there's 68 teams to start, two play-in games, and then you have to pick 64 games accurately and the cool thing about sports is that they're so unpredictable that you never know who's going to win even if you know their ranking system says so and so is number one so so is number 32 or 16 you know it it doesn't really matter because like say one player gets injured then the bracket could be busted for everybody who's following the system so yeah the odds are against you a little bit but I have filled out one bracket so far. It's probably all I'm going to fill out. I may not have enough time to do my other idea. Um, I kind of wanted to fill out a bracket, and uh, since the odds are so ridiculous, I wanted to pick the winning teams based on the best logos. And maybe I could do a podcast about that. Like, I don't know. Or maybe it wouldn't be a podcast. Maybe I'll do an article or something. It'll be a little late. But I think it could be kind of fun. So I want to talk to you guys about my bracket and what I did, but just know that I don't know a lot about college basketball. Like I'm a big sports guy. I follow a lot of professional sports. Um, but when it comes to college basketball, it's just like, you know, that many more teams I have to follow. And me being an Idaho Vandal, I try to pay more attention to them than anybody else, but I find myself getting sucked into the professional sports world more. So I kind of, um, lose track even on my own team. So it's really tough. And I'm going to pull up my bracket. I believe I logged in. Oh, my goodness. I better be logged in. That would be upsetting. Uh, <laughs> where's my bracket, guys? This is embarrassing. I know I had. Oh, I pulled it up in a new tab. That's why. Ha <laughs> ha. Gotcha. I have my bracket. I'm not going to tell you who I picked just yet. I'm going to see if I can talk to you guys about what I, how I went about choosing these teams. I'm not going to lie. Most of the time I picked the team who is the highest seed. So I have um, in the East and Midwest, I've got Villanova going all the way to the Elite Eight. And I also have Kansas going all the way to the Elite Eight, elite eight and they're a number one seed as well. Um the people like all the numbers in the elite eight have a, a one seed, a three seed, one seed, two seed, and then I've got a one seed, five seed. I've got a five seed in the elite eight. That was probably the biggest upset. I have another. I have a four seed. See, this is why I don't follow follow college basketball. When I'm doing this bracket, I just kind of think, you know, on a whim, like you know what, these guys. I feel like these guys. They're going to go on. I just feel it. And, like, I don't know anybody on that team. I don't know who's coaching that team. Like, I don't even know where that team is. And I'm just like, 
just go for it. So that's kind of my strategy. <laughs> um, but just to talk about some of the upsets, I've got, uh, let's see, where's a good one? Oh, man. Sorry, I'm trying to find a really good one here. Hmm. I have a couple of eight seed or uh, nine seeds beating an eight seed. Um, that's almost as crazy as it gets. But then again, let me see here. I I have uh, UCLA beating Kent State and then going on to beat Cincinnati, and then I have UCLA beating Kentucky. So UCLA is a three seed. Kentucky is a two seed. UCLA is like the only team that I really know of any players on. They have that, um, what's his name? The ball. His last name is Ball. His dad's name is LeVar. And I'm going to get to him in a minute. I'm going to talk about him. Um, I know that, yeah, anyways, I know him. I know he's good. So I'm like, you know what? UCLA is going to beat Kentucky. And then, and then they're also going to beat UNC. Um, and then they're going to get beat by Kansas. So my final four are Villanova, Gonzaga, so two number one seeds there, Kansas, and then UCLA. So three one seeds and a three seed. One of the crazy stats out there is that there's never been four, or there's only only one time ever that all four number one teams went on to the final four. So that kind of speaks to the unpredictability in sports yet again. Uh, so I'm like, you know what? I've got to have one team go on, and it – in my like rapid click through of this bracket, trying to get it done on my lunch break earlier at work, <laughs> I end up having UCLA go to the final four. Um, you never know. I mean, I called my bracket the winning bracket. So who knows if I win it, I, I could be rich. Um, and so my, my national championship teams are Gonzaga and Kansas, both number one seeds. Um, I, I just couldn't stand to have a number three seed in the championship. I just didn't think that was going to happen. Uh, Gonzaga has been on a friggin' tear this year. And to talk about them a little bit, like they were undefeated all year. The only loss that was dealt to them was by BYU. They beat them by eight points, 79, 71. So I kind of went with my gut and I was like, you know what? They're, they won a lot this season. I think I'll go with them. So I have Gonzaga beating Kansas becoming the national champion on April 3rd in Glendale, Arizona. The tiebreaker, just in case anybody, for whatever reason, ties me or has the same picks as me, um, my final score, I have 82 to 78. So at least it's going to be a close game. You know, what you want to see is a replay of last year where Villanova had game-winning shot in the national championship game. There is nothing sweeter than that. And that's like just one moment in sports in the last year that um, that proves that we've all been spoiled. Like, I mean, there was that, the Super Bowl with the crazy upset, the Warriors with the 3-1 upset, the Cubs with an, a 3-1 upset. Like, craziest year in sports I have ever witnessed. And so, who knows? Maybe we can get it going again with the Gonzaga buzzer, buzzer beating win against Kansas. We'll see what happens. But... That was my longer segment on March Madness than I thought I was going to do. Um, I mean, it is March Madness and it is basketball. I feel like I had to talk about it more than I planned. So whatever. It is what it is. But um, you guys should let me know who you guys have. Let me know in the comments. Who do you have going to the Final Four? And maybe who, even just who your national champion is. I'm kind of curious. Um, chances are it's a number one seed. <laughs> I mean, that, that's just kind of how it goes. So that is March Madness. Close out of that tab. Kaboom. Um, now let's get back to my outline here. Oh, yeah. So let's get back to that LeVar Ball guy. I like This guy really bugs me. LeVar Ball is the father of three really well-known basketball players. Two of them are in high school still. One is, it, is playing for UCLA currently, and he's really the only reason why I have them going to the Final Four. Um so their dad, LeVar Ball, has been saying a whole bunch of just crazy things lately. One of them being, um, I think the first one he said was that LaMelo, or no, which one was it? His his oldest son is playing for UCLA. I should have their names typed out. Oh my gosh, the Ball brothers. Let me look this up really fast. I bet you they have a website. 
Nope, that's that's not their website. Okay, I hate automatic audio playing on on websites. That is like the worst thing ever that you can do. Um, but anyways, there's a guy, a kid who plays for UCLA. He's 19 years old, and his dad's like basically to the media talking about how he's only going to play for the Lakers or he's he's going to play for a certain team, you know, XYZ. He's basically trying to put his son where he wants him to go instead of letting his son like like fulfill his own dreams of being a basketball player. It's like his dad's trying to live vicariously through him and I find that really annoying. Like, you know, when I have kids, whenever that is, like I just want them to go on and do what they want to do. And if they happen to be a basketball player, I'm not going to tell them where they should go. I just feel like that's really weird. And so their dad has been in the media talking all this smack. And now they're there. That puts just like pressure on them having to perform in the moment. And I just don't think it's a good idea for, for the family. I mean, you know, I'm all about staying out of other people's business, but I'm like, dude, you're putting yourself in the media. I have to talk about you. Um, so yeah, I just think it's kind of crazy. And then another thing he said was that, um, he he's asking or he he thinks that he should have it, like between his sons there should be a 1 billion dollar shoe deal each of them get 333 million to sign for different shoe companies and it's like that's that's not your thing like they have to prove themselves first there's two of your sons that are still in high school one is 15 I think the other one is 18 graduates this year. And the other one's 19. He's played like one year in college, maybe two. I'm not entirely sure. I should know my facts, but I'm just kind of going for it right now. Um, and he's already making all these assumptions of their success in the professional world in, t- in terms of basketball. Do you know how many players have gone on, especially after one year in college? Um, and, or even there have been so many players who've done four years in college, played basketball every, like all four years, they were a top recruit. They go to the NBA and they just aren't the same player. It's the same thing in football. I mean, you you see it all the time. There've been, there have been so many Heisman trophy, like blunders. You know what I mean? Players who are the best player in college football, they go to the NFL and they are just, they're, they're just not nearly as good. They don't fit into the system as well. And so they're, I just think it's silly that their dad is trying to paint this, crazy spotlight on them when they're this young and puts all that pressure on them. I, I don't know. I, maybe I shouldn't talk so much smack. I still, I just think it's crazy. (laughs) But then the most recent thing he said was that he himself, LeVar Ball, the father of these three guys, um, he said that he could take on Michael Jordan in his prime. And I just laugh. I, I laugh at that. He's like, yeah, he can, he, <clears throat> what do you say? He he can't get past me. I play too good a defense. And I'm like, dude, it's Michael Jordan. Do you know this guy? Do you know Michael Jordan? Have you heard about him and his has have you heard seen his work? Have you seen it? He would beat you. So <laughs> I don't know. That's sort of tied to the college sports thing, and I just kinda had to talk about it and it just bugs me. <laughs> Anyways, moving on. Let's talk about some baseball. This might be my longest podcast yet. I hope you guys are liking it. (laughs) Seeing a bunch of people pop in on Facebook. Nice to see you guys. How's it going, Sean? How's it going, Rob? Steve? How you doing, Steve? Mike Shell? How you doing? Um, Anyways, on to baseball. So, if you know me personally, you probably know that I don't follow baseball all that much. I I just generally enjoy going to baseball games, having some nachos and a beer or whatever it is. But this year I'm taking it upon myself. Well, I should say I'm taking an invite from my friend Charles to join a fantasy baseball league in hopes of becoming more up to date about the sport. Um, and like, I know it's going to be a time consuming thing because fantasy baseball, there's so many games in a season, right? And you have to set your lineup probably a week in advance because it's just too many games to keep track of. And I don't know all the different stat columns and what to look for in a player. So that's going to be educational for me. Uh, I figured since I'm doing a blog and I have a, a baseball category, I should probably do something about um, getting my knowledge up on that topic. So, um, yeah, so I look at I look at me playing in a fantasy baseball league as research for my blog. And hopefully it opens some new doors to uh, some new contributors and some and maybe I can write some, some more baseball articles myself. 
Um, and so throughout the season, you can expect some articles in the uh, fantasy faction category as well as baseball. Um, hope to generate some pretty cool stories from that experience. Um, more baseball news. Uh, I talked a little bit about him last week, Tim Tebow. He was taking a lot of criti- uh, criticism from people about using his fame to get into baseball. Um, but um, his success this week kind of shows that hard work does pay off. Um, so I think it was yesterday, a couple days ago, he he got his first hit in like eight at-bats. So he finally broke his cold streak. Uh, but in that same game, he made a, a diving catch for the team. Team ended up winning. So, you know, not a huge contribution. He probably didn't bat 100, but good for him. Like I said, it just shows that, that, that hard work pays off. Tebow equals GOAT, says Steve on Facebook. Is this Facebook? I think that's Facebook. I have, I have too many live streams going. It's got to be Facebook. <laughs> Tebow equals GOAT. In terms of what? I'm, I'm curious. Tebow equals GOAT. It, greatest guy of all time. He's he's a dang good guy. I mean, I'm not saying he's the best at any sport, but he's a he's a dang good guy. <clears throat> um another uh kind of cool story here in in the baseball world. Uh the Colorado Rockies celebrated Pi Day today by sporting jerseys at the national anthem lineup and they the players stood in order to show the first 30 digits of pi. Um, one of the weird stats about that is, which I, I find kind of crazy, honestly, only six of the numbers in that lineup were uh, numbers that were not worn by players. So they basically wore the right number so that they can have the sequence of 3.1415, whatever, whatever. Um, I don't know. I just thought that was kind of cool. Um, it's kind of like another one of those areas where sports are trying to connect with something that's not really related to sports, something that's uh, educational. Uh, brings awareness to what pie is. I mean, there's probably people out there in the world that are like, what is pie day? Why is that a thing? Does it involve apple pie or cherry pie? No, it, it's called math. Um, so <laughs> I kind of think that's sort of what they're trying to do by, by doing that. And I thought it was just interesting. So I thought I'd share. Um, moving on. I think that's all I've got for baseball. Um, like I said, fantasy baseball, buddy invited me to it. A lot of research going to happen. Expect some articles there. Um, I don't have a team in baseball. I mean, I'm, I have a team in my hometown, and I go to their games all the time. But uh, and maybe I'll write some articles about them. Maybe I can get some local rankings on some articles. We'll see what happens. But uh, moving on to NFL, some football, National Football League. Um, free agency started, and kind of, kind of like the. Um, the trade deadline in the NBA, the free agency in football is kind of crazy. Um, some of the storylines that came out were people like Tony Romo saying goodbye to the Cowboy fans, which was pretty sad, honestly. I mean, he's been there his whole career, right? And and he's a nice guy. It's just unfortunate that he's always injured. And he does he does have a lot of haters on the internet, but who doesn't when you're a good a good uh, athlete? You know what I mean? Uh, but there was a huge trade that happened where um, Osweiler from the Texans went to the Browns and freed up a whole bunch of cap space for the Texans. And there's a lot of rumors that um, that opened the door for Tony Romo. They're trying to get him in there in his place. So it would be interesting to see how that plays out. I mean, I I haven't heard the latest on that. I mean, if somebody's watching and knows more than me, I please give me the info right now. I, I don't have time to look it up right now. I should have looked it up before. That's just my bad. Anyways, um, last I heard, Ru- uh, Romo going to the Texans. We'll see what happens there, though. Um, Adrian Peterson is a free agent, which is kind of big news. I mean, he's he's getting older. He's like 32 years old, I think, 33 or something like that. Um, had a couple of pretty, bit, pretty serious injuries. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how he performs this year on whatever team that he goes on. Um, but... On that note, Eddie Lacy today, <laughs> bye Felicia, <laughs> uh, Adrian Peterson, bye bye, or no Tony Romo, bye bye. <laughs> Wonder if that's a Tony Romo hater there. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> Eddie Lacy went to the Seahawks today, and I saw a pretty funny meme. I think it was NFL memes on Facebook. Uh, if you're not following them, you probably should. Some of their stuff is a little bit raunchy, but most of the time it's pretty funny. 
Um, Eddie Lacy went to the Seahawks and they made a meme that said something like the Seahawks went from having beast mode to having feast mode. (laughs) I thought that was hilarious because I mean, if you know football or you watch football, you know that Eddie Lacy put on a little, a few extra pounds over in the off season last year. And he got so much crap for that on the internet. I mean, people had him on his fantasy teams and they got people who had him got all been out of shape because they had no idea. And anyways, the Seahawks picked him up, but I think he might be a, a, a good guy to have, especially um, with, um, what's his name? Thomas Rawls. I think that's his first name. I know it's Rawls. That guy, he kind of ran a lot like Marshawn, but he got injured last year. So I think the Seahawks are trying to pad that running back position. Um, but there's been talks that with Eddie Lacy, similar to the Romo situation, with Eddie, Le- Eddie Lacy going to the Seahawks, there's talks that Adrian Peterson could go to the Packers. And the most interesting thing that I pull out of that is that the Packers and Vikings are sort of a rivalry. Um, I remember when I was a kid, I mean, I don't have a favorite uh, football team because I jumped around to so, too many different teams when I was younger. But when I was a kid, I was a Vikings fan. <laughs> and I just remember like Dante Culpepper, Randy Moss, Robert Klein Saucer, no, Robert Smith and then Klein Saucer, their fullback. They, and Chris Carter, I don't think I mentioned him yet. They had a, a stacked team, the Vikings did. And that was when um, the Packers had Brett Favre, obviously. I think they had Antonio Freeman. Um, and I'm struggling to remember who else they had on their team at that time. But I just remember that being a big rivalry when I was younger, like in the or, or, uh, late 90s. Uh, early 2000s, um, back in the Culpepper days. And so I, I, I find it interesting that he's going to be going from the Vikings to the Packers, see if there's any storylines that come out of that. Um, but yeah, so that's pretty much, that's all that I picked up on in the NFL free agency. Uh, when I was throwing my outline together, I was trying to get as much stuff in there as possible, but I knew I was going to be spending some time on baseball and basketball, especially with them being uh, in the current season or you know coming up and whatnot. So... So, yeah, that's all I've got for the NFL. But um, we've talked about the blog at the beginning. We talked about all the major sports that we cover. Um, uh, just to mention a couple others, I know that NHL is going into the playoffs right now. Uh, based, or The NBA will be joining them in the playoff runs uh, here pretty quickly in like a half a month or so. Uh, really looking forward to that. Um, you know, potential re-re-match. Is it a re-rematch? Yeah. A re-rematch between the Warriors and the Cavs. We'll see if that happens. Um, and then baseball starts relatively soon. Um, so, yeah, that's what we've got for sports. Now on to the question. So last week, so you people that are here on Facebook, um, last week I I asked a question to anybody who listened to the podcast um, and uh, in hopes that they would send me an answer just because I'm kind of curious. This is the whole point of abstract sports is to start a discussion with sports that I think anybody can relate to in real life. And so I like to ask questions that any sports fan can answer, whether they're a professional athlete or they are just somebody who played T-ball when they were younger. You know what I mean? And so my question last week was, how have sports impacted your life and what have they done for you? And some people probably have a much deeper longer story than others but um i just thought it would be an interesting question to ask because i feel like uh you know me growing up i played a lot of sports and i know what they did for me um and so i'm curious to hear other people's stories if you still want to send in your answers i'm I'm happy to listen to them and i'll maybe share them on the next podcast um and i'll i'll, I'll tell you where to send those in a second but first i want to answer the question I, I feel like it's only fair that if i ask the question i answer the same question myself so Sports had a huge impact on my life. I mean, you know, I don't don't play professional sports by any means. Um, But when I was younger, um, sports kind of kept me distracted from all the trouble that I could have gotten into. You know what I mean? Um, I feel like when you're growing up, there's always some people around you that, that could influence you in a more negative way. And I think I was fortunate enough to be so involved in sports with my friends that it it kept me away from some some other bad habits that may not have been better for me down the road. So I played a lot of YMCA basketball. Um, I played a lot of YMCA indoor soccer. I played t-ball. 
Um, I didn't go any further than that. Maybe that's why I'm not a huge baseball fan or not major baseball, you know. Um, but I, I mostly played basketball and I think that's why I'm, I'm partial to that sport. Um, and you know, I, I played soccer for several years, but I mostly played basketball all the way up through my ninth grade year in high school. Um, and at that point I was just sort of riding the bench and I just didn't think that it was worth my time to, to be doing that when I could be focusing on my grades. Um, growing up, everybody just kind of, they're like, Oh, Kyle is a book smart kid. He, he's a, he's a smart dude. Um, <laughs> being a kid, that's not how people talk to me, but, um, I, I just definitely focused on my schooling a lot, like all the way up into that point. And so I made the decision to stop playing and, um, I look back and I'm like, you know, I kind of wonder how that would have played out if I would have continued playing basketball in high school. Um, but the thing with basketball is that like when I was, when I was like 11, 10 or 11, maybe even nine, somewhere in there. That's when Kobe Bryant joined the NBA as a, as a, well, I guess he went to the Hornets first, then he got traded to the Lakers. Um, but when Kobe joined the league, I like in my head, I'm like, that's going to be me. Like, like I talked to my mom. I remember telling her this. I'm like, mom, I'm at, I'm like 10 or 11 mom, that could be me in eight years. And at that time, my oldest brother, um, he was that he was the age of Kobe Bryant. And I just thought that was the craziest thing. <laughs> I'm like, bro, did you know that you're the same age as a professional basketball player? And, you know, my 27th birthday being this weekend, I and then today Steph Curry turns 27. It's kind of the same thing. It's like, man, now I'm the same age as a, like I'm older than a lot of the players in the NBA. <laughs> um, but when Kobe came in the league at 18, I just, that was sort of like, I mean, if you, if you followed any of our, our posts on the blog about chasing the ghost, Kobe was like my ghost when I was 10. I just, in my head was thinking, you know what? I am going to try my hardest to be the best basketball player I can until I am like 18 years old and going into the NBA, making millions, buying my whole family houses, you know, and <laughs> This is like a dream that I had made up as a kid, but I'm like, this is going to happen. And when I hit freshman year of high school, I kind of thought, you know what? I'm not tall enough for this. I, like, I'm not good enough for this, but I am good at school. So let me focus on that. And so I think sports, especially with the whole Kobe story, I think that gave me a lot of inspiration. It kind of taught me how to set a goal and chase it when whether you achieve it or not, it's kind of like, if you shoot for the moon, you'll land among the stars. I mean, very cliche, but that's very much what uh, basketball was for me growing up. And so I definitely think sports have had a huge impact on my life. And like, I will, that's, that's why I'm doing this whole sports blog, because I want to talk about the impact that sports can have on people's lives more than just sports, but more about life. Cause there are so many parallels that, that a lot of people just don't like to look at but that is like my thing. That's my thing. So, so that's why this blog even exists. So I thought that was a great question to ask the first time around. Um, but I, I have a question for you next week. Like if you, I mean, if you want to, here's the next question. I'll, I'll tell you in a minute. If you want to answer this question, you can send it to us at, you can email it to us at hello at abstract sports.com. Um, and the people that are watching on Periscope and Instagram and Facebook, I think you kind of feel my passion about sports a little bit. And I would love to hear some of your answers to these questions because I think we all have probably something pretty cool to say about them. Um, and I would love to share those stories. That's that's what I want to do with this blog So, um, and this podcast. Um, so anyways, the next question, and I, this is a question I'm going to ask you. You try and send it to me before next week when I do the podcast or whenever I can get around to it, hopefully next Saturday. Um, and then I'll, I'll give you my answer after that, um, that podcast. So this week's question is, I mean, this one's a lot, it's not as serious. <laughs> Maybe it is. Maybe I'll make it serious next week. We'll see. Um, but this week's question, what is your favorite story going around the sports world today and why? And, I, you know, like I said before, I answered the question before. I think some people can have a deep answer to that. Other people can have just like, oh, you know, I like I like Tebow. So I like I like that he got a hit the other day. 
that's fine. Share that with me. I want to share that with anybody who watches or listens to the podcast. Um, so the question again was, what is your favorite, spo- uh, sorry, one more time. What is your favorite story going around the sports world today and why? Um, so, you know, everybody has different sports that they like. Everybody has something they bring to the table when it comes to sports. So share your answers with us at hello at abstractsports.com. Send us an email. Well, <laughs> this was a great podcast. I think this is coming up on about 50 minutes. This is probably one of my longer ones, but I think this one went really well. Um, thank you to everybody who came through. I see there's a few people here on Facebook, Instagram. We had a couple people come through and maybe a couple on Periscope as well. Um, I appreciate the comments. I'm I'm glad you guys came in and got involved with the conversation a little bit. Um, I think that really helps me out when I'm doing this because then I can, I can build your talk into my podcast. And I, I think that makes it way more fun. So, um, if you want to get involved with abstract sports, head over to the website at abstractsports.com. And in the footer of every page, there's a link uh, to a page called contributor FAQs. Go check out those questions. Um, If you have any questions about being a contributor, you can probably get them answered there. Um, Send us an article at the submit an article page. uh, Also linked in the footer of every page on the website. Um, We accept anybody who wants to write for the blog. Obviously, you can just submit an article. We will edit it. We'll get back to you and we'll let you know uh, what the next steps are. But uh, I really want to try to grow um, the group of writers we have. I know a lot of friends that that uh, watch and listen and pay attention to sports in so many different ways. And I think we all have stories to tell about them. So that's why I want you to get involved with, with my blog. Um, but you can, uh, going forward, you can find this podcast on iTunes, on Stitcher, SoundCloud, and YouTube. Um, please drop a comment on any of those platforms or even on this live stream that you're watching. Uh, let us know what you think about the content and the podcast in general. Let us know how, how we're doing. Um, and please know that feedback is always positive. Whether you set you whether you think it's negative or positive, it helps us become better with this podcast. So let us know what you think. Uh, be sure to follow us, uh, like our page on Facebook at facebook.com slash abstract sports and Twitter at abstract sports. Abstract with a K. Still don't have that handle. Makes me upset. Um, but I think that's all I've got for you guys today. Uh, thanks for coming through. Thanks for getting involved in the chat. Um, and thanks for tuning in, uh, again, I'm Kyle Richards and you just listened to the abstract sports podcast. We'll see you next time.